Brittany and Zoolander, take one, action. Thank you. All right, cool, cool, cool. We appreciate all the extra shit, too, that I didn't tell you to do. All right, there we go right there. Yo, what do they call me? They call me Devin Zoolander. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Yeah, they call me Devin Zoolander. What's good for the goose okay. is good for the gander. And I look good on camera. You know I look good on camera. Ooh, that girl's a genius. Ooh, she's really smart. Okay, so that's gonna be like you right there. So whenever, <laughs> so so whenever, so I'm a so whenever you say something, you really like the point. Then I'm gonna tell. Then you can feel free to press the red button. Okay. All right. So I don't know if you need. Well, you're good right there. Okay. Let me make sure. Um. Wait. Can you say something real quick? Check mic one two one two. Okay. All right. All right. All right talk a little more. <laughs> My cool. name is Brittany, and I am here with Devin, and I am here, and it's going to be a great show. And uh. yeah. Uh. Yeah. Um. The yeah. Devin Zoolander Show. That's right. Yeah. With Brittany Lene. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. What's up? It's your homie, Devin Zoolander, coming all the way live from Studio 9. And today... It's a very special day because I have with me a woman that is super intelligent, that is super motivated, that is all around super fly. And if you have eyes and you can also see that she is <laughs> super fine, a woman that is vibrant, full of energy, someone that I was attracted to based on her page and what she's doing for women. And what she doesn't know is that you're also doing something for men too. Because I think men, especially black men, uh -huh. seeing black women love and uplift black women, and you have that whole force field around you of strong, powerful women uh -huh. that support you, then for a guy like me that is hoping to one day marry a woman like that, it makes me want to do better because I can't win unless I'm in the game and I can't be in the game unless I'm around the dames and I can't be around the dames unless I look at someone like you and what you're doing. Gotta come correct. Gotta come correct. <laughs> so without further ado, oh man, man, I, I, I just had a brain freeze. I wanted to say, wait a minute, wait, what's the name of your organization again? Ladies Who Link Up. Yes, yes, that's what it is. I was calling it Women Who Link Up in my head. You're right. fine. Yeah, all right. So we got Ladies Who Link Up, the CEO and founder. Yes, sir. Please put your hands together for the one and only Brittany Lene. Hello, hello. Okay, so... How are you today? I am great. I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so happy Thank that you we were for able. Inviting me. Oh, no problem. <laughs> it's been about you for the longest. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Tell me anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will. <laughs> oh, my bad. Wait. Oh. <laughs> Just a real quick tutorial because I do this with everybody that comes on the show. Okay. Here's what we got going on. All right, so. This button right here is like when you say something really. All right, so I'm gonna let you press it. Almost, almost fell. Wait, hold on, hold on. Ooh, that girl's a genius. Ooh, she's really smart. So if you, so if you say something that you feel like, or I, I feel like you said something that was like really powerful like that, mm -hmm. then you could do that. All right. Okay. So if you want some laughter, you're gonna press the orange button. <laughs> she's killing me. All right, that's enough. Um, if you want to, uh, yeah, 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 don't worry. If you want to hear some applause, press yellow. Right, 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 right. Okay. Uh, if a guy is in your DMs and it's just a low vibration conversation, please don't put me out there. And it just is just not really giving what it's supposed to give, then you got to press the button next to the yellow button. That is very common. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 
Somebody was twerking. Anyway, so um, and then if someone, if if one of us says something that's like funny, but it's not not, it doesn't deserve like a full round of laughter, then just hit the light blue button. Okay, now you're driving. You're leaving a party. A car is behind you. You're like, all right, one block, two blocks, on the highway, same exit. You're yeah, still behind me. me. Oh, snap. <laughs> I need you to press the blue button. Okay. And now, if you're a fan of the movie Mean Girls, but you feel like throughout the course of conversation, there's going to be a point where I say something and it doesn't feel natural. It feels like I'm trying to make it work. You would press the purple button. Stop trying to make fetch work. All right. So that's what's <laughs> going to happen right there. And then lastly, because you are... You know, some might say beautiful or something like that. Something like that. Then you would press <laughs> the pink button and work the camera. <sighs> Every time. All right. Well, now that we got that done, we can get started. So first of all, let's start from the very beginning. Where are you from? What activities? What? Wait, where are you from? What schools did you go to? And what activities were you involved in as a youth? Okay, so I grew up in Homestead, um, PA, near the waterfront. I went to Still Valley in high school. Um, and then I went to Slippery Rock, which is about an hour from Pittsburgh. Um, activities. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's cool. Um, high school, I was in sports. Like you said earlier, we, we had our um, yeah. conversation before this. I was... I did half a season of basketball. I was horrible. I was good at the, um, like, getting the ball. I forget what that's called. I had no business playing basketball. That Long story short. Okay. Um, I was a softball girl. I was I was decent at, like, softball. I came naturally. And then I did um, cheerleading, obviously. And, <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, so from there, I went to Slippery Rock, Sports was not what I wanted to do as a career or anything like serious. So I stopped my sport. My sporting career ended very so very soon. Um, I was more of a. So I might forget about the button. So like you, you I got can you. do your thing. I got you. Okay. <laughs> um, in college, um, I may I end up majoring in graduating with my bachelorette of hospitality and resort management. Um, it did not start that way. I was, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I know I wanted to go to college. So like everyone else, I did business management okay. and, um, that didn't work out. It was, um, the classes were super hard. So my, my advisor at the time, like my freshman year advisor was horrible. Like literally gave me a paper and said, all right, enjoy your four years. And like what they're supposed to do, <laughs> what they're supposed to do is like, set you up your classes like set up the four years for you mm -hmm. so they're supposed to be like all right take these classes first and then you'll take these next semester and then you'll take this like your next year he literally like hey you're in business management take these papers enjoy your four years mm. yeah so i end up taking the hardest classes for business management first and i was oh. like struggling yeah struggling in that so I was like, I'm thinking in my head, because I didn't have anyone to tell me that the classes, these were the hardest classes. I am, um, I'm thinking it's just going to get harder from there. So I was like, I'm struggling in these classes. Like I literally have a D in this micro macro class. And I was like, all right, the, it's, it's only going to get harder. So I was like, all right, I need to, I need to switch majors while I'm, while I'm at it now. Like while I'm still early, early in the game. So then, yeah, I found hospitality and I was like, my main thing was like, all right, I can have fun with this. So hospitality is the advisor. First of all, the advisor was a thousand times better. He was so committed. He was so passionate about what he was doing. And he it, he really convinced me to do hospitality and resort management. Mm -hmm. So it's um, resorts, obviously, hotel, the hotel industry, um, cruise ships, um, what is it? You can festivals mm. was included in that. And um, it was like festivals, concerts, pretty much anything like 
anything fun. Like, you name yeah, it, yeah. like, we were learning about it in our major. So I was like, hey, sign me up. Like, if I can have fun and, like, and not feel like work, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, from there, after I graduated, I was still in hospitality. I actually moved down to Florida for about a year. And then somehow I got homesick and ended up coming back to Pittsburgh. Mm. So, yeah. And now here I am with ladies who link up and figuring that and figuring everything out. Right, right, right. Well, round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing because I asked and I'm glad that you answered. Yes. yes, yes. yes. Wow. Well, that is really something because when you were talking about your, so you had two different advisors or what was the, yeah. Okay. So it was a business, business management advisor. So for the, for that course in that like major. Okay. And then once you switch, switch, um, switch majors, I got you. Now you have this other advisor advisor who's in, who's in charge of hospitality. So essentially when you switch majors, that was, like what, that was the best thing that you could do for yes. yourself. Oh yes, it had a huge, huge part in where I am today, actually. Yeah. Mhm. Okay. And where it, are you today? <laughs> it um. So today I am. Where do I start? Today I I have like ladies to link up. That's my woman woman empowerment group. It is a business development. Well, so. It's, it kind of started off, my Ladies Who Link Up actually kind of started off the same way like my college career did. Okay. Or, so, yeah. or with hospitality. So with hospitality, with hospitality, um, I told you, I just wanted to have fun. So, all right, if I can have fun, like, that's cool. So whenever I got into, like, whenever I started Ladies Who Link Up, I was like, all right, I just want to have fun. Like, I want to be surrounded by women who... Uh, wants to have fun, who wants to, like, connect with each other, who just wants to, like, ignore all the negativity and just come together and just have a good time. That's that's originally where Ladies Who Link Up started. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that sounds like it, it, it matches up. I think when you talk about your, your interest in, in hospitality, mm-hmm. when you talk about vacations, and I, something that you said also reminded me of when I was a student at Cheney University, it seems like... Disney World, they have some kind of like internship or something Mm -hmm. where you can do that. And it's like related to hospitality and you learn some things. And so when you said that you moved to Florida for a year, that's what I thought of. Yeah, actually, a lot of my classmates uh, went to Disney. Like, I I would not a lot. I would say three of them Mm -hmm. actually had the opportunity to go to Disney. And Uh, I wasn't really into kids like that. So I was like, I'm going to skip Disney. I'm going to... I ended up did going to the resorts. I was an activities coordinator. So I was planning all the family and children's like um, activities on the, on the resorts. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was um like literally anything. And then we helped with a couple weddings as well. So I was in like, it was pretty much event planning, event planning on the resorts and then like the kids activities. Yeah. You know, that reminds me of recently I was watching resort to love with mm-hmm. Christina Milian <laughs> and I'm seeing how they have to, even though it's more about her and it's mm-hmm. more about her her uh, ex fiance mm-hmm. and, and you know you saw the movie and everything, I but did actually. but but yeah, but w- what was really cool about that is when you see how beautiful the resort is, but you see how important it is to have the entertainment and the entertainment being able to deliver mm-hmm. because when you have a DJ, yeah, a DJ has a certain standard and you want the DJ to be fun, but the DJ can always kind of like call an audible because mm-hmm. I got access to unlimited music all i have to do is play it i have to play it the right way at the mm-hmm. right time right. but i don't actually have to perform it when you have people that are supposed to be like wedding singers and, and performers it brings a different uh type of commitment to it and i think that one thing i want to ask you about is what is the difference between doing event planning for a resort versus or or, or tell me like to, to the to best of your ability like when you hear Describe a small skill, medium skill, and large skill uh, event planning, and just tell me about what your experience is, and if you have any stories about a time where, and I hate to make this sound like a job interview, but if there was ever a time where you had you faced some adversity, how did you overcome that? Okay, so I would say a small skill to start with is just. Um, 
in for the event planning is having organization. Organization is the main the main like thing with with event planning. You without organization, like your event is might there is a high possibility that it's going to turn to. Can I cuss on here? Can I? Yeah, yeah. it's going to turn to shit. Yeah, yeah. So organization, you you have to start with organization. The second skill set I would say you have to have is um, I would say like the connections. I would say connections. You have like to make your events. Mm, yeah, I would say connections is the second one. The connection, just having setting it up where you can have like place people in your event mm-hmm. where it is it's a successful event. Mm-hmm. And then the third one I would say is marketing. So once you have like you have your organization, you have your, you know, your connections, your people that are gonna play a role in your event, um, your in your event. Then you get your um, marketing. <laughs> then you get your marketing. Uh-huh. Yes, um, and then it's getting people to come to your event. Yeah. So you have to be able to have like good marketing, good branding. That's like that's a huge part. Mm. That's that's a huge part. If it it should be number one, but organization is number is number one. But branding and marketing is huge. So we yeah, yeah definitely. So all together we have organization. We have connecting connections your, right. ne- your network right your network all right so you have to be organized you have to have the network and you have to have really good marketing mm-hmm. all right so speaking of marketing we know that you're on social media yes. and social media is a tool that you use to build your business as well as learn from other people and and take steps from them and try yes. to incorporate them into what you're doing with ladies who link up so i want to know just tell me about what what was the thought process behind your branding for ladies who link up? So the thought process behind my branding is it it came to it, it developed over time. Mm-hmm. So at first, like I said, like whenever I started Ladies Who Link Up, I was just trying to have fun. I was just trying to, you know, get women together without the negativity. Mm-hmm. So that's you can see it in my branding. Mm-hmm. I was just posting like little cute stuff that had no no meaning, no purpose. Right. So over time, as I grew and once I, my business mindset actually came into play, then I was like, okay, and now I can recognize other like bigger companies. Whenever they put something out, it's for a purpose. They're, it's, it's strategic planning. They, they, a lot of people, everyone actually, that that's trying to make money. They're strategic, strategically planning mm-hmm. their business. So like everything that they put out, it has a purpose. It has a reason. It has a purpose. It's, there's, it's... It's intentional. Yes. yes. Very intentional. Yeah. Very intentional. Um, so what, what happened was, as I developed it, now I'm starting to pick pieces and pick up on things of, that bigger companies are doing. And once I, you know, did... I took a class, a branding class, actually. Okay. And I learned so much from it. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I knew that they were doing this, but I didn't know what it was called. What, what was the name of the class and, and where did you take it? Oh, it was, um, it was actually called Branding and Marketing... Um, Building your content. Building. Oh, and let, I'm sorry. And just, like just for uh, clarity purposes, was this while you were in school or was this like an online course after you graduated? This was an online course after I graduated. Gotcha. Yeah, this was after I moved back home. Mm-hmm. So after I, when, once I moved back home, I was done like with resorts. I was done with the hospitality. Um, I actually went into real estate, but we can talk about that in a second. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so I started... I took the class. It was called branding and marketing and like building your content and building your clients. Mm-hmm. And that was with, goodness, let me think, um, Elite Tear, Elite Tear Branding. Okay. And that's their name on uh, social media and their website, mm-hmm. Elite Tear Branding. So it's two girls, Aisha and I can't think of the other girl's name, but they're, they're pretty good. They're okay. pretty good. They work with bigger, bigger clients. And then they have, they have like other classes, but I took their branding, like their um, master class and that it went over branding, um, getting clients, building your business and right. yeah, Sorry, the, I, the whole nine, yeah, the whole yeah. nine. I learned a whole lot from yeah. that. That cough drop just hit a little differently <laughs> just now. I was like, damn, that's a loud ass noise. The fuck? Like, okay, well, fuck. Anyway. Ooh, that girl's a genius. Ooh, she's really smart. All right. Yeah, yeah. You you are. You are really a genius and you're really smart. And I appreciate that thank you, you, thank you. Yeah, that you took that class. Now I want to actually talk about 
why it's important to be a lifelong learner and why just because you receive your degree, you earn your degree at Slippery Rock, Mm -hmm. the learning didn't stop. You didn't just say, well, hey, I took some business courses. I struggled a little bit. Maybe I did better in some other courses, did some hospitality. And I got all that. I got all the knowledge I need to know. (laughs) Like, tell me about how important it is with social media becoming more of a force in how we attract business and how we build engagement. Tell me about why it's so important for us to be lifelong learners and for us to really think about taking additional master classes on top of our formalized education. Yes. So I would say the system set us up where you go to school, you get a job yeah, and you die. Right. Right. And that like, that's, that's how they want you to be. You know, they don't want you to keep learning after you go to school. They want you to learn. They give you the, a minimum, a bare minimum education. Mm-hmm. You find a job after that. That's not going to pay you. It's it's you're barely living. Like you can't live. Like you're living to work. Right. And then you die. Like you retire, and then you eventually whatever. So as you're as you graduate college, you have to continue to learn, continue to teach yourself because that that's going to help you. That is what's going to build your your value in this world. So as you have more education, you're more valuable. So now that's when you get more paid, like paid more. So I would say learning, teaching yourself and being always being able to learn and, and having an open mind and, and, you know, committed and, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and just searching for, for, for search d- is the open mind. Yes. Searching, searching for opportunities, searching for the education that is going to help you expeditiously. Right, 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 right. <laughs> With the TSA S- expeditiously. Right, right. I don't know what he was talking about. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, would that be word that. just came out of nowhere. I don't even know if that it, fit in that sentence. It's all right. It, I don't think it fit in that sentence. Um, no, no. I mean, hey, it, it's all good. We, we ain't in school right now, so we can, we can take a poetic license with that. But uh, I, think, I think you're making me nervous. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. So, I'm kidding. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I hope not, because anyway, um, we'll, we'll talk off camera. But um, no, nah, no. Nah, well, uh, the reason why I bring that up is just because I feel like going back to what you said at the mm-hmm. top of your remarks when you were talking about how a lot of us believe that you you go to high school, you graduate, mm-hmm. you go to college, you graduate. Maybe if you desire to to have some kind of leadership role. The way we're taught is that you go to grad school and you graduate mm-hmm. and we don't talk about the debt. There, there are so many things that they don't teach us as far as buying property. Like you said, real estate, you didn't learn that in school no, because they're not teaching that in no. school. You have to go out and get that yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like when we put so much stock in GPAs and we put so much stock in the, the Dean's list mm-hmm. or who was a salutatorian or who was a valedictorian. Yes, you should you should strive to be your best and you should try to be at the top of your class, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. But at the same time, you have to know that if that is the cap for how much knowledge you're going to pursue throughout the rest of your life, then you're going to get left behind 